Look at these. Some of these may be easy to tell that it is not drawn by humans, but for some... Oh god, it is pretty much impossible to tell it's generated if you're not familiar with the artifacts made from AI image generations. So what happened? In the blink of an eye, AI generated art with text has suddenly risen to this level of quality. Five months ago, we just had our mind blown away by the realistic images which Dolly 2 can generate and stunning landscape art Mid Journey can paint. All by simply entering a text prompt into the AI. But even back then, we were able to tell that it was artificially generated. Since the release of Stable Diffusion, which is basically Dolly 2 but open sourced, a lot of enthusiasts have gotten hands on the million dollar AI model. Anyone can generate any images just by entering a piece of text. Absolute bunkers. This is also where the open source effect kicks in. The implementations, GUIs, web GUIs, apps are all sprouting out left and right. Open source technology is without doubt going to be discussed, improved, and evaluated more than any other closed source research. This was the case for the research paper Textual Inversion published on 2nd of August, which was built upon an open source research called a latent diffusion, and it can embed image information back into the AI by associating them with a special symbol and a text. This provides ways for us to utilize our own image for referencing or editing Editing in a text to image generation AI. You can have this picture to be repainted in a different art style or use it as a pose reference to generate Elmo sitting down. On the other hand, a research called Dream Booth published on 25th of August is definitely the turning point of modern AI art. What Dream Booth proposes is that given a subject in an image, it can maintain the subject's form coherently and recreate it under a different context through a special fine-tuning method. In their paper, they gave an example by fine-tuning a stable diffusion model using a collection of Corgi images. The Dream Booth technique will assign the Corgi a unique identifier along with a class name that generally describes what type of subject they are. Then, after 15 minutes of fine-tuning, by entering a text prompt that contains the unique identifier and its class name, you can then generate the corgi in any other sceneries, performing different actions and from any angle. Mind-blowing, right? Before, if you wanted to generate a corgi, you have to be very specific about the color of the corgi, fur patterns, or even lighting to be able to generate the same corgi over and over again, and still with no guarantee that the corgi will still have the same butt shape. But now with Dream Booth, you can relocate and recreate anything doing whatever you want them to do simply after those 15 minutes of fine tuning. What's even better is that the fine tuning only needs 5 to 20 images, and the Corgi image collection that they used to fine tune above only used 4 images, which are the ones that they displayed above. And that is groundbreaking! Because if you compare to the usual fine tuning method where you need 10 or 100 thousands of images to fine tune stable diffusion that was trained on 5 billion text and image pairs, I am not joking when I said this is a turning point. But wait, you might be thinking, with this small amount of images to fine tune using the Dream Booth method, is the model not going to overfit with such a small amount of data? Problems like language drift can potentially occur where a text to image diffusion model slowly forgets how to generate a generic subject associated with a word and can only generate the fine tuned subject instead. This was solved by their method called prior preservation loss, where it'll have a separated model not being fine tuned and basically share weights between each other. This prevents the language drift problem and it actually does surprisingly well. To prevent confusion, for the rest of the video, I am calling the Dream Booth method separately from fine tuning because they are slightly different. So now, imagine you have 5 to 20 images of a person, a fictional character, or an object. Even with drawing faces and bodies, which is a field that AI art generators have always been bad at, Dream Booth can redraw them easily. Like these AI generated illustrations of an anime character. This was also done by Dream Booth, but with a few more adjustments than what you would have done with normal realistic images. First, Dream Booth did not publish their official codes, and instead, people over at Stability AI made a custom implementation of it to fit together with Stable Diffusion by using textual inversion. So the referred Dream Booth is just the technique that it uses, not the codes and results you would see on their official paper. Second, in order to get Stable Diffusion to at least generate illustrations, on a normal basis, fine tuning is definitely needed in order to do that so later on when AI is redrawing any illustrated characters under an illustration context would be possible. Hence, people over on Dongfang Project AI fine tuned a stable diffusion model with over 300,000 illustrations was created and named as Waifu Diffusion because of the amount of anime related illustrations it can generate. Then lastly, a dev called NMKD Dream Booth this character with 7 of its fan art and it was able to reproduce illustrations 
illustrations of this character in many different contexts. I have Dream Booth one myself too and it actually works. And with the right parameters, you can get something as nice looking as these. And this is scary. Very scary. The Dream Booth method and model fine tuning like Waifu Diffusion is only at its initial rise, and blowing up in a lot of Discord communities with people passing around custom models like crazy or offering service similar to this. And even without Dream Booth, the newest fine tuned model Waifu Diffusion version 1.3 that trained on 600k art illustrations on top of the original Stable Diffusion model still has really high quality and coherency, which has results that can easily deceive and be passed on as non AI art. And they also announced version. 1.4 where it will be trained on 10 to 20 million anime style images which is planned to be released on the start of december and as of around 13th of august people in the community even came up with a new tweaking method where by adjusting the layers that are processed by clip more coherent images can then be generated more specifically clip is the component that helps the ai to understand your prompt text and by reducing the processing of clip on your text prompt which is basically stopping the processing one or more layers early the output of clip that is then used in stable diffusion will have some decent visual improvements especially in image coherency aka render Rendering five fingers accurately? Five? Even though the details on the fingers are still a bit scruffy, but you know, one of the biggest obstacles for the AIs is definitely generating small details like this. However, only models that were trained with this tweak can use this method, which is called a clip skip. On the other hand, this discovery may have been made from the leak of novel AI's custom models and codes, and a lot of new information such as hyper networks which is an unseen technique in AI was made public. There was quite a lot of drama surrounding this leak, and I might cover this drama in the future, but for now, and probably also in the future, I will remain neutral. But anyways, is this technology a bless or a curse? Well, I am definitely very concerned about the flow of funds across from artists to model trainers, GUI maintainers, and code implementers, but I guess we will all soon find out, because the future that a lot of us were worried about is literally right here in front of our eyes. Additionally, I will be making a video on the potential effects and problems real artists have to or gonna have to face because of these AI technologies. So subscribe to stay tuned to that and thank you for watching. But if you genuinely want to explore and learn more about how to make AI art and see what the current technology is capable of, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, OpenArt.ai. OpenArt is basically a website where you can explore hundreds of millions AI generated images, ranging from AI such as Stable Diffusion, Dolly 2, or Mid Journey. For me, to generate good AI images that are presentable or related to topics for videos like these is sometimes a very time-consuming task. First of all, I need to experiment what keywords work and what doesn't work, then it's just a really repetitive experimental task where I just waste a lot of time on generating the images I like. Open Art provided me with ways that I can explore images created by other people a lot easier. This allows me to save time on seeing results without ever needing to generate myself and can take inspiration for the text prompts from other people's generations. For people that don't have a powerful GPU to generate AI art for research purposes endlessly, this service would definitely save you some bucks too. And this this can also be a great way to draw inspiration for design, painting, art, or photography. The website is really straightforward. In the discovery tab, you can just type in what you want to search, then have an endless scroll of AI-generated images for you to browse. If you see any images that you like and you are too lazy to save it locally on your computer, you can just hit the bookmark button to save it under your account. They also have this fast remix function under images generated through open art, which when you press it, it'll not only copy the prompt but also automatically adjust all the parameters for you and you can further modify based on. Then they have this challenges tab where there are different challenge sections for you to post your work on and the top voted artwork will win 500 credits for their newly online stable diffusion and dolly 2 generator which consumes 0.1 credit per generation. This is also the same place where the remix function would take you and don't worry they provide 200 free credits for any new users which equates to 2000 generations. Additionally there are a lot of ways for you to earn free credits too so if you don't have a powerful enough GPU I suggest you to check it out. They also have this generation history where you can choose to create variations or upscale any of your previous generations. I'm pretty sure variations will cost you credits, but upscaling does not, which is pretty neat. So check out open art at openart.ai and start creating using the link down in the description. Big shout out to Andrew Lascellius, Chris Ledoux, Dan Kennedy, Sean77134, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. If you have any questions related to Dream Booth or Textual Inversion, feel free to join my Discord and ask there. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next one.